Gentlemen, we truly live in strange times. And by that, I mean things we used to talk about a decade plus ago are now mainstream. You have professors of evolutionary psychology coming onto podcasts with people that are, how should we put it, a little bit less than reputable. And it doesn't matter. The cat is out of the bag when it comes to human psychology and male and female nature. Everyone and his cousin is talking about it. And I talked a little bit about this in How the Pills Broke the World video. But to say the least, the manosphere has exploded massively. And much of this, I think, is just due to momentum, the momentum of the internet being as big as it is. Let's be honest, 12 years ago, the internet was not as big as it is right now, and that's normal. You can only keep things bottled up for so long. Eventually, someone's gonna talk about it. But I think there's an even more important factor going on here, and that is the shift in male demographics. You see, when I started making videos, basically about 12 years ago, the men who were interested and affected by these topics were of a different generation. Many of them had been married, had divorces, negative experiences. Many of us, myself included, had relationships. And it was just a different situation. And so you had this phenomenon of MGTOW. After having experienced several relationships or even failed marriages, this idea of just sort of giving up on it and moving on and just living your own life on your own terms. And for a lot of guys, that was sufficient. But bear in mind that at this time when we were talking about these things, in our 30s and 40s, there was a population that was still 10, 11, 12, they weren't even teenagers yet, that would soon face new struggles and new problems. Of course, I'm talking about the Zoomers, Gen Z. And their issues are not the issues of a, say, 49-year-old guy who's divorced with two kids. Very, very different. And again, this in conjunction with the expansiveness of the internet, basically the internet being as huge as it is now in 2023, has led to a very different, how should we put it, market in terms of the manosphere. When you look at content, most of it is about how to get women, or in the case of black pill content, how you're never going to get women. And this is actually a radical shift from the way it used to be. Sure, there are always PUAs and various con artists who are trying to bilk you out of your money, and we're trying to quote unquote teach you how to get women, but the focus is just very different now. And one of the key differences I should note between back then and now is this distinction we used to make between the notion of a human doing and a human being. Because beyond trying to attract women, it's just a hardwired fact of reality that as a man, in the vast majority of cases, maybe if you are a giga giga chad and you can get by in your looks purely, but in the vast, vast majority of cases, you are what you do. What you do keeps you relevant, keeps people paying attention to you as a man. On a macroscopic scale, you have no intrinsic value. Your value is tied to what you do and how the world regards what you do. So if you're a street sweeper, then the signal you are sending to the world and the perception and the interpretation of your being as a man will be that you sweep the streets, which is, let's be honest, not a terribly lauded profession, and it's probably looked down upon, certainly by women. I'd argue that no educated woman would get together with a street sweeper, unless you were 9.5 on the look scale, in which case it's a whole other ball game to begin with. So what you do as a man communicates your value to the world and the perception other people have of you. And men almost intrinsically understand this and recognize it. That's why most of the advice out there is how to get your act together. Jordan Peterson and this other category of gurus who are less inclined to give dating advice and more inclined to give life advice, that's their thing. Get your act together. Do something important. Become someone important because that way people will notice you and pay attention to you. The problem with this strategy, as many a man has discovered in the course of his life, and I have seen thousands and thousands of comments to this effect over the course of a decade plus, is that the minute you stop doing that thing that made you important and relevant, and perceptible is the moment you cease to exist. The phrase, women are human beings and men are human doings, rings true and always will. A woman could do something, but her value is found elsewhere. It's in her reproductive capacity. Women are reproductively, biologically more valuable than men, and therefore they will pretty much always have intrinsic value, even after their reproductive years are over. Because this interpretation of importance and how we treat women in general carries over throughout their lives in a way that men can never experience. And what we used to talk about in the manosphere, to be perfectly frank, was learning to 
treat each other as men, as human beings, to assign value to each other on some intrinsic level, to have compassion and understanding for your fellow man as a human being, as opposed to all the things that you can do for the world and even do for yourself. What would have happened, for example, in the case of Jordan Peterson, if after his medically induced coma and all the drugs that he took, he lost his mind and he became a raving lunatic? Well, people would have stopped listening to him to a large degree, to put it mildly. And every guru out there trying to prime you for success, especially as a young man, you need to be aware of that. If you're making a lot of money, if you're in the spotlight, that's great. But the second you fall ill and are incapable of delivering the goods, you will disappear. You will fade from the limelight and no one will care. That's the harsh truth that none of these guys talk about, which is why back in the day, in addition to other things, Barbarossa and I and others tried to talk about the notion of being a human being, of treating each other in a way that isn't necessarily hostile and not only looking at each other as workhorse providers, as automatons born to simply do labor, to shine the sun briefly and then to be extinguished. Because that's the reality. If you don't treat yourself as a human being, as a man, no one will. If you are being primed just to pursue quote unquote greatness by making money, hustling, that's great. Money's important. But I guarantee you that that's the only thing the world will see. And it's the only thing that you see. Even people like Chad Williamson recognize that. They question their actual intrinsic worth and rationalize it by saying, oh, they'd still be valuable even if they were in a world-famous podcast or in a supermodel. This is, of course, bollocks. Men will never have value in the eyes of the many, in the eyes of the outside world, outside of what they do. So if you don't treat yourself as a person first, as someone with intrinsic value, even if the whole of the world doesn't acknowledge that, no one ever will. And you will get trapped in this mentality of just trying to hustle your way through life. And the second you have difficulty, your health fails, or there's some other obstacle, and you can't hustle your way through things anymore, you will become invisible. And no one will care. And no one will reach out. Because you are just a means to an end for the rest of the world. And the worst part of this all is that if you've been convinced by all these gurus, then you've convinced yourself that you too are only a means to an end rather than a human being with intrinsic value. If the rest of the world isn't going to assign you intrinsic value, you have to be the person to do so. You have to take your own feelings, your own thoughts, your own concerns into account as a human being rather than a human doing, because no one else will do that. And then if you're lucky, if you can find like-minded men, they too can treat you as a human being rather than a human doing. Other than that, maybe your family will treat you as a human being, but even that's not guaranteed. I've seen many, 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 many men over the years be treated as utilities by their families, and it made absolutely no difference that they were blood-related. Blood does not run thicker than water, despite what people claim. And if you're a young guy and you're lost out there, consider this. Yes, improve yourself. Yes, try to get out there. Yes, try to make money. Yes, try to get a GF or hookup or whatever. But bear in mind, those are all externalities. Ultimately, you need to take care of yourself and you need to regard yourself as someone of value to yourself. And none of the tripe out there in the manosphere or elsewhere tells you that. Not anymore. It's all about reaffirming your position in the world as a human doing and expanding upon it. And if you do that, you will lose sight of yourself because the world already has lost sight of you a long time ago because you're a man. You are a human doing in the eyes of others, so be a human being to yourself. As always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons. As always, you guys are the best. You keep the channel going. Special thanks to my donors on PayPal as well. And if you can engage in the usual YouTube jazz of liking the video, sharing the video, commenting, and subscribing, if you're not yet a sub, be much appreciated. And as always, may the gods watch over you. Take care. If I'm still alive, I'll check you next time. Bye-bye for now. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.